my enchanted peeps um today i'm just making a video just a little update thing um i know i haven't made a video in a little while it's just because i got sick last week with like horrible stomach flu or food poisoning or something it was terrible and so i haven't made it any videos in the last while but i'm back and i'm feeling better so that's awesome so i kind of wanted to kind of talk about the cards that i use on a daily basis um i have lots of tarot and oracle cards but i like to make sure they all have a use and they all have um you know that they're all useful to me and so um, I do different things with them and I just kind of wanted to go over some of the things I do, maybe give you some ideas or maybe, you know, you might have some suggestions as well for the way that you use your cards kind of on a regular basis. So you guys have probably seen my altar back here. Um, you can kind of, the way it's cut off, you can see there's about five different cards there. So I'm going to kind of go over what the ones on my altar are. So I have a daily card that I always draw in the morning just for myself. And this is over and above the daily card draw that I do on my, um, on my Instagram and Facebook site. Um, on that one, I usually like to do a different set of cards each month. Um, and so that way you kind of get to see a different deck and get to know it. And we can kind of get to know it together. So I do that. But for this year, I've been using a daily card just for me on my altar. And that was been from um, the Enchanted Map by Colette Baron reed um, It's a 54 card oracle deck. So a little more than the standard sort of Doreen Virtue Hay House 44 deck. A lot of the Hay House ones are 44, but this one's 54, so it's pretty chunky. Um, it comes with like a nice little guidebook as well. Um, I've had this for a while. I actually bought it like a couple years ago and used it a little bit and then put it away. And then this year I kind of felt called to use it as my daily deck and I really actually am quite enjoying it as a daily deck. I find it gives me a little bit of wisdom for the day. Um, for example, today I got, um, I got, what is it? Coming to life. So that's my daily card for the day. And so I'll just put it on my altar there for the day and it kind of gives me my daily wisdom. Um, last year I was using her other deck, um, the Wisdom of Avalon. Um, but I kind of found like, you know, it was a really good deck too, but I kind of felt like I needed this year to do something a little bit different. So I went with the Enchanted Map. I also do a weekly uh, card as well. And the weekly card kind of tells me a little more like creative wise what I need to be doing for the week. And for that one, I've been using uh, Messages from Your Animal Spirit Guides Oracle Cards by Stephen D. Farmer. There we go. That's uh, This is also another, um, I think it's Hay House as well. Um, it's definitely the same kind of style. Um, and these, the, for example, this week I got the Condor, which is kind of about stepping back um, and taking a more, you know, sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Detached view of a situation. So that kind of gives me some guidance for the week with that. So I put that there every week. So every Monday when I'm starting my work week and stuff, I pull that card and that kind of gives me an idea creatively. Um, as for the other cards on um, the altar, those kind of switch around a bit. I have a card that I use for the lunar cycle. I will pull a card um, for the new moon, and then when we get to like the first quarter, I'll pull one for the full moon, and then uh, when we get to the last quarter, I'll pull one for the dark moon. And then that kind of tells me what I need to be working on magically or spiritually, and you know who I need to be working with. And I have several different God and Goddess decks, but for July and August, I am working with. Um, the Ascended Masters Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue. I find these have like a really good um, balance between masculine and feminine and I kind of see this time of year as being both masculine and feminine in that um, you know the sun is at sort of its height you know we're in long days um, you know we just celebrate summer solstice which to me is a very masculine kind of energy um, and then we also have in August you know we have Lammas where you know there's um, in Wiccan tradition, a celebration of, or Lunasa in Celtic, uh, using the Celtic cycle, uh, the celebration of, you know, the goddess as, or pardon me, the, la, 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 la. <laughs> the god being sacrificed because we're starting to do harvest and it's all about the, the sacrificial god. Um, so I really see that as masculine energy, but you also have a lot of, you know, strong goddess energy still, you know, with the harvest and with the earth being, you know, so fertile, um, you know, at least in this, in the Northern Hemisphere. So I see it as very like masculine and feminine. And I find this is a really good deck um, because it has both male and female deities. It also has some ascended masters and saints as well, um, which if, you know, if you 
you're Wiccan, you may or may not like. Um, I, you know, while I'm Wiccan, I also do have a lot of New Age leanings as well. So I have, I'm perfectly comfortable with this. Um, and so for this full moon, just to share with you, I got um, Kuan Yin. There she is there. Um, and I, I get her a few times in like my other decks as well. So I, I'm pretty comfortable with her, but it's about let it, letting things go. So it's telling me that, you know, during this sort of lunar cycle that I need to kind of, you know, let things go. I don't have to control everything that, um, you know, I can, I can turn over the universe and, and see what happens. So that's sort of the reminder there. Um, I also use, I have, um, some Ogham cards, which is Celtic. Celtic runes, and these are, aren't really divinatory. I use them more to show where we are in the cycle. So this is Hazel, because right now we're in the um, the July moon. Um, a lot of times you'll buy calendars and they'll show you the Celtic month and they give sort of these approximate dates, but in reality they, they represent different moons, and right now we're in the Hazel moon, so I've put this up there, and that's just like, just like to put them there, so that's there. Um, for the Sabbaths, I also pull a card uh, for who to work with and what issues I need to be working on. But um, what I do for that, and this may sound a little strange, but I have about six different God and Goddess decks. And so what I'll do is I'll roll a dice and um, I kind of assign them numbers. And then, for example, like I got, I got number two, which I've assigned to the um, Druidic uh, Animal Oracle, which is not necessarily God and Goddesses, but I do have a God and Goddess association with each one of them. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll, like, say it's number two, for example, I'll shuffle and I'll pull one, and I got this one, which is the Ram. Um, and so it, it kind of has different lessons, but also this one's associated with the Smith God, Govanon. So uh, it tells me that um, this is something I need to be working with right now. So this kind of works for me. This may sound like really complicated and stuff, but it's not to me. I have a daily card, I have a weekly card, and then there's a card I pull, um, you know, when the moon changes, and then there's a card I pull every Sabbath, you know, that tells me what I need to be working with, working on for the next Sabbath period. Um, and this works for me, um, and I find it keeps the, the altar kind of changing. It tells me what I need to be working on, but this is what works for me in my personal practice. Um, that may be different for you. Um, I should also mention that I kind of have a side altar here with um, some ancestor sort of items and pictures and things. And on that one, I have, um, I'm working right now with the Angel Therapy deck by Doreen Virtue. And so at the beginning of every lunar month, I'll pull a card. And again, it's just like a very general sort of spiritual guidance. Um, and right now, I have uh, this one, You Are Profoundly Clairvoyant, um, which is something that I've been sort of working with and working on right now. Um, and it's really bad I'm talking as I turn away, which is terrible. Um, but, you know, these are things that I work with. Um, I also do um, work with different tarot decks at different times of year and then different oracle cards because I usually read oracle in conjunction with tarot when I'm reading for people. So right now I'm working with um, the Myths and Mermaids oracle. If you're thing. following me on Instagram or Facebook, you know that I'm working with the Myths and Mermaids Oracle that I got recently. So um, you're learning with me as we go through, uh, you know, we pick a card for the day. Um, and this, you know, I always ask that just whatever people need to know, that's the card that I pull. Um, so that's the one I'm working with this month. And then for July and August, um, I picked the, uh, for tarot, for like working with tarot and reading for people, um, I picked the beautiful creatures tarot um, to work with. Again, it's a deck I got recently, but I haven't had really a lot of time to work with. And I like to take like a couple month period and just like work with that deck just to really get to know it and see what I think of it. So I've been working with this deck and I'll usually read with this deck for other people unless I feel specifically called to like this person needs to hear from this deck. So I, I do stuff like that. So um, those are the decks and stuff I've been working with. Like I said, you know, let me know like, Maybe this system is too complicated, but it works for me. Um, you know, do you have these kind of systems or is there one thing that you always work with or do you just kind of do it intuitively like, hey, today I want to work with whatever deck. Um, let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.